learned that it has to be her life story, not mine. You know, she wanted to get married at 16 and I thought it was crazy. But then in the moment I went, how do I know? What if it's exactly what she needs? Like this could be the best thing for her. Like I, I don't, it's her life. I have to let her live it. And maybe it's bad. I don't know. But all I know is every so-called bad situation in my life Mm has given me a gift. So where's the bad? Why do I want to prevent those things? Right. Do you know the most incredible thing? Like this is so crazy that we're talking about this today. um, I was talking to my 21 year old and um, my 21 year old was saying to my 12 year old, you're just like me. You act like me. And she's like, you like bracelets and you like rings. And I said, no, she acts like me. My 12 year old turned around and looked, looked at me and she said, no, I'm not either one of you. I'm my own person. Good. And I was like, good, good for you. You are your own person. And, and it just her and having this conversation, it's just like, you're exactly right. How Olivia you know, said at 16, I want to be married. Yeah. How can I tell my 12 year old, you're not your own person. You're, you're a replica of me or yeah. you're a replica of your dad. You know, you have traits yeah. of us, but you, you definitely are your own individual person. And I feel like, you know, um, I understand parenting more than I think I do, you know, out of this conversation. It it just is enhancing what I can do better, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, I, as, as a parent being a single mom, like I, I juggle a lot of plates, you know, and one of the things um, with her is I homeschool her. And that is probably one of the most difficult things when I'm, working full time, you know, and, and trying to get her to get through her books, you know, it makes me feel guilty that I'm not here and I can't wear all the hats all the time. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know, Kenny, like, what would you, how, how do I balance that as a parent, you know? Well, um, first of all, I want to stop. I want to, say something about the I'm your own person. You taught me something. I realized with one of my kids, a lot of times I'll say, you know, th- they'll do something. I'm like, oh, that's just like your mother. That's just like me. And and I'm realizing, wow, that's so destructive because it's mm-hmm. robbing my child of their own inherent choice. Why does it be about my ex-wife? Some of those I'm perfect. I'm like, no, you're just like me. You're just like your mother. You know, I'm trying to possess my child. So I'm glad you brought that up. It helped. It, it shined a light on another area of my parenting I can improve. So thank you. Um, the It sounds like, I mean, your propensity with what you've been through yeah. will be to be very hard on yourself and and guilty and feel like you have to do more and want to do it all. And... Um, the more you can pass some of those, your, your, your child's 12 now, I mean, almost a teenager there, those are responsibilities of, you know, here's your books, here's your homework for the day. You get a choice. You can either do this and then go play with your friends, or you can not do this and stay in your room with no TV and whatever. It's your choice. I don't care what you decide. But the I, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the book Parenting with Love and Logic that I talk about, but that's at that age, that's a perfect book to get, start passing the responsibility on and letting basically you let them pick the consequences and instead yeah. of you controlling everything. And that really frees you up. Um, time-wise, guilt-wise, everything. It's amazing yep. how powerful that book is on allowing your child to step in and be their own person, um, make their own choices, and for you to, you know, for us as parents to stop the codependent dynamic. So that right. that I would highly recommend that you grab that book and do okay. as much to give 
give responsibility to your 12 year old instead of trying to be hovering over top and making sure it all gets done. That when we do that as parents, they won't do it because it's mm-hmm. they, then they get what's called negative control. They screw up on purpose because look at all the attention I got. And so we end up rewarding it when we don't even realize it. Yeah. I, and that, I don't think I hover over it. Um, sometimes I don't think I'm involved enough in it because okay. of the hours that I work because, and then, you know, um, the thing is, well, if you're just, homeschooling her, yeah, you're teaching her, right? Um, I have help with that, Kenny. I have help with that. Okay. She, she does the books and, um, I've hired a tutor at one point and, um, I'm looking into hiring another tutor because literally like there's days that I don't get home till 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, um, and, and I leave at four or five in the morning. So, gotcha. and then I'm up doing it again. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it just, it, I do, I feel really guilty. And the reason I do. Okay. So it's the opposite. I misunderstood you. You're not yeah. around enough is, yeah. is your frustration and concern more the abandon yeah. the abandoning parent because life you're trying to make ends meet. So you're very busy. Yeah. Okay. Are there ways you can, how often do you guys spend time together? How often do you guys talk throughout the day? Things like that. We do talk um, periodically throughout the day. Um, and then when I get home, it just depends on what time I get home. It's it's not as often that I'm working as late as I, I like the 10, 11. That's very, like, that's short, shortened Um so it just, it just depends. Like I can't say, Oh, well I'm home at this time and I'm home at this time, but the, the weeks have gotten better since I've learned my route. Okay. So I'll get home anywhere between four and eight in the evening. Um, and we will, we'll discuss, but she'll go to her dad's and, and we won't talk about that, <laughs> but she'll go over there and he'll take her to go test. But, it's just for me. It's just like I gotta find a healthy balance in that area with her. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I would I, again. I would turn that to her. Ask her what she needs. Mm-hmm. You know, like with mom being so busy, are there certain things that matter more to you? Would you like help with homework? Would you like to sit and talk? Like, I know I'm busy. I'd like to be here more. Right now, I can't. But how can I be there the best way for you? you right. Know, and, and see what she comes back with. Yeah. You know, I just learned the more as parents, we gather information from our kids um, versus dictating information. Uh, yeah. It, it tends to go much better. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. This is yeah. great. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you called in. I'm going to, I think I'm going to hang up. I'm going to wrap up with the other two styles of parenting just so people have an idea of what they are. Um, I really appreciate your vulnerability and, and sharing kind of your experience too. So mm-hmm. thank you thank for calling you. And, and being a part of the show, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm really enjoying the book and definitely promoting it. You're the best. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jamie. Have a great night. <laughs> You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That was Jamie. I appreciate her calling in. <clears throat> and you can hear in that conversation a lot of the first two elements, the abandoning, rejecting parent. Again, <clears throat> not much she can do. She's trying to make ends beat, ends meet. Um, and then the possessive, too, because she's, you know, really wanting to make up for her imperfections with her um, first child. And so, you know, there might be an over-attachment to her second child. And not that Jamie's bad or anything. It's, again, stuff we just don't teach. We don't know where that healthy balance is. Her heart for both children is right where it's supposed to be, loves them dearly, wants nothing but the best. But we don't teach this stuff. So 
Um, I want to get into the last, before we wrap up for the night, I want to get into the last two types of basically parenting. And it's the, the domineering and controlling parent and the hypercritical parent. The domineering and controlling one, um, they're usually aloof, standoffish. Um, they set the rules, a lot of fear involved, um, very little explanation. It's just their way or the highway. Uh, they control your choices. They very rarely will admit their faults. Um, I, you know, you'll see this or hear this a lot of, you know, mom, I, I ran into this with my dad. My dad had a rule. Whenever two people were fighting, nobody was allowed to jump in because we had four kids within five years of each other. So two kids get fighting. All of a sudden, the whole house is a disaster because everyone's fighting. So he's like, the rule is when two people are fighting, no one else is allowed to join in. Well, I was 18, 20 years old and I was having not really an argument, more like a passionate disagreement with my mom. But neither of us, it was just, it was really lively. I don't recall either of us feeling disgust or, or bad feelings towards each other. Anyway, my dad came upstairs from the basement. He always ran his office from the basement and he just freaked out. He's like, Kenny, you stop it right now. Stop arguing with your mother. And I just very, this was like the first time I ever tried to confront my dad. It was very domineering. And I said, well, dad, I'm kind of confused. I thought your rule was that if two people were having an argument or disagreement, no one else was supposed to join in. And he flipped out. Well, I don't care. Just don't do it. Just stop. So you see that a lot with the domineering or controlling parent. They're highly insecure, and so they have to be right. They have to control things uh, because that's the only way they feel safe. And because their self-esteem is so low, they try and control everyone and everything around them to try and build up their self-esteem. But it's a it's a self-sabotaging process. It never works because they end up pushing people away. So they feel more alone, more isolated, more rejected. Um, and that's what created it in the first place. So, um, you know, how do you find yourself as a parent now? Do you see yourself doing the same thing of, look, it's just my way. I'm the parent. Um, how was that for you as a child? Or was it the opposite? You had no rules and no structure. And so now you get away with, you let, um, you, uh, are dominant. Or you were dominant, you were dominated and controlled as a kid. So now you let your kids do everything. They walk all over you. So yeah, that's how it was with my parents. My mom, I had no rules. I could do whatever I want. My dad, I had tons of rules. It was very confusing. If I wanted something, I'd go to my mom. You know, I always, I could manipulate her. And, you know, so was that a dynamic growing up? Do you have this? Because <clears throat> my mom was very possessive. And so she, you know, as long as I was giving her attention, she'd let me get anything I want, you know? So these dynamics are very destructive. Um, And then finally, the hypercritical parent. This is the parent who, no matter how you do something, you did it wrong. You get a 95 on a test and they ask you, why didn't you get a hundred? You know, Um, I had a client like that. (laughs) They have certain expectations for their kids grade wise. And, they would get rewards if they were over a 3.5. Well, the grades came in. One of the kids went from like a 3.6 to a 3.8. The other one went from a 3.7 to a 3.6. It's still well above the 3.5 threshold. But she came in and talked to me in my office, you know, telling the story, you know, she, um, you know, said the, you know, when the one son said, so what do we get? What are we going to celebrate with? And she said, well, you're getting something, but you're not. You went down. It's like, wait a minute. I'm above the three, five. Well, this is all born out of um, her child, her childhood, where her grandparents criticized everything. (laughs) She could do no wrong or do no right ever. And so it was a natural, remember, the repetition compulsion. It was just a natural reaction for her to be hypercritical as well. And yeah, Marianne uh, brought up this as well, or the parents who do not gauge in your life at all. Yes, that would be the abandoning, rejecting parent. 
They just don't ask about anything. They don't care. They don't ask about your friends or school, you know, anything like that. I know with my kids, we sit at the table every night. And my first question was, what was the best day of 